Okay, everybody, this is my review of The Boys Season 3, Episode 4, Glorious Five-Year Plan. This was directed by Julian Holmes and written by Meredith Glenn. So I'm going to break this review into two parts. First, we'll start everything going on with The Boys, and then we'll do the second half talking about Homelander and everything going on with The Seven and Victoria Newman. One of my favorite things about The Boys is all these quick pop culture references the butcher always has and just little lines he says that are hysterical and there's a lot of those in this episode one of my favorite moments he has with huey is when huey realizes because he threw up on him last episode that he's on v he's like where did you get it and butcher says one of those websites boners for days i thought that was great and then we'll see he has another great line of this to frenchie which we're going to get to in a second but what happens here is that little nina wants sherry who is Frenchie's best friend we saw in the previous episode in exchange for helping Butcher get the PCL red. This again is setting up that constant back and forth we have with Butcher where he'll do anything to get what he wants and is he going to do something that will really hurt one of his closest allies. So it's something they're kind of toying with us and also Frenchie's worried about because he literally says to Kimiko, I'm worried he's going to give them Sherry because he sees the plane that Nina provided for them. But Butcher overhears him and says, what kind of monster do you think I am? He's like, enjoy it. Pretend you're an entourage. Just great. I mean, nothing's going to top the Spice Girl line from season one, but a lot of these lines are just still very, very funny. But what happens is they get to Russia and Nina tells them she's located the lab where the weapon is, but Butcher informs them they have to do a job for her first. So he says he needs Kamiko for it and obviously this pisses off Frenchie and Kamiko and she feels like she says that she's just his hired gun at this point but he's saying it was either her or Sherry's head again with Butcher you can only take things with a grain of salt there's always more to what he's actually saying and we also get a good scene here where Butcher talks to Mother's Milk and explains to him why he recruited him saying that you were the one who held the platoon together a natural born leader and that's exactly what he's here to do is look after the boys especially when Butcher feels like he has to go the next level and Butcher has that self-awareness in a point where he admits yeah he can be a monster himself but that's where it's kind of like Mother's Milk's supposed to be the one that is the glue for everybody. But my favorite scene, hands down, this episode, and one of my favorite scenes to date on this show is Kimiko's job here that she has to do. And it's just great because we see she's wearing heels, which is not like her, so she trips in the heels. But that will get a little payoff in the action sequence because she'll flip those heels off and then become the Kimiko we know. I love this Russian had literally dildos of the seven. I thought that was hysterical and I love all the action beats in this sequence. So one, I love how shocking and brutal it was that Kimiko just shoves the Black Noir dildo right through this guy's mouth. And then she switches to the Maeve dildo and it breaks in half. Then grabs the translucent and deep dildo at the same time, smashes the translucent dildo over the guy's head and finishes with a starlight dildo to this guy's throat that eventually vibrates. I thought that was brilliant and hysterical and gruesome, which again, I'm a huge fan of gore if you watch my reviews. So I thought the gore here and the violence was great. And it has a nice payoff to it though, that it scares the sex workers here and Kimiko can relate because she's someone who's been sold in her life and she doesn't want to be the monster to them, understands why they're scared. And that's why you'll have this great scene with her and Frenchie where she's like, They were brought and sold just like me. Butcher sold me. He doesn't treat any of us as people. And she literally says Butcher, Shining Light, Shining Light being the people who killed her parents and originally kidnapped her and her brother and little Nina, she says, are the same. So she's like to Frenchie, it's you and me. And Frenchie's like making this happy plan with her to leave, but they first have to finish this job for the sake of Mother's Milk and Huey. They want to help out their true friends, not Butcher. But again, this always scares you because you know when you have these kind of talks and shows, something bad usually happens to one of them in the relationship And it's looking like that might be Kimiko here, which we're going to get to. So this episode as a whole, what I'm loving about it is there's a lot of juice in it. There's a lot of meat. Like a lot goes on. Like if anyone complains about an episode of a show, like I do all the time, that not much happens. This has a lot of happening and a lot of plot progression and a lot of twists. And I was really excited to see Huey now sees Butcher using the V24 and wants in. And that... He doesn't understand why he can just use it and he can have this pity party butcher, not him. Because Huey literally has Homelander scare the crap out of him this episode and then writes his name on his cast, you know, and he's taunting him about Starlight. So he was terrified. He's frustrated. He feels like a loser. So there's a lot 
that's earned for him wanting to do what Butcher is exactly doing. And then we get this great sequence that's not at the lab, but actually a military base. And Mother's Milk gets some nice references to movies with Russians and Americans fighting like Red Dawn. And then he references Rocky IV. And we get this super hamster, which I loved. And they did a nice, another nice action sequence here where they run out of bullets. So it's a perfect setup for the contingency plan that Butcher has to use the compound V24. But that is going to shock them, the other boys, that Butcher has these soups powers. But the real shock to the audience is that Huey has them as well, that he used it. And it's in a very funny sequence. It's perfect for Huey. And I love that Kamiko covers her eyes when he is naked. I thought that was great. But what's so interesting is you see Huey's already getting that feeling. Butcher's getting like they get hooked to it, this feeling of power. And it's so hypocritical on their part because they were to be the ones that stand against using Compound V and soups in general. And you see that Huey, there's just a good moment where he looks at the cast that Homelander signed and he's relieved and happy like he's beating this now. He's not under his thumb anymore. So that can be scary and it, it's one of those things that you can see from the other boys with Frenchie, Kamiko, and Mother's Milk. They almost expect it out of Butcher to do stuff like this, but they're really disappointed in Huey. Huey's the one who always takes the higher road. So he's lost a little respect here. But this has been set up well through the whole season that Huey's kind of really insecure. He's hurt by the Victoria Newman reveal. He's jealous of Starlight and he's worried about Starlight as well. And he's insanely scared of Homelander. So it's a lot of good writing here for that kind of justification for him to kind of change his character and use this V24. And on top of that, we get now the appearance everyone's been waiting for of Soldier Boy. With Butcher opening this canister with his superpowers. And this is huge for Mother's Milk because Soldier Boy killed his family. And it's a crazy scene because now Kamiko saves Frenchie from Soldier Boy's blast, but she's not healing. So was she hit by the PCL red here, this weapon? Was that in Soldier Boy's blood? That's my theory right now. We'll see if that holds any water, but that's got to be the reason why she's not healing. So it's a nice little cliffhanger to see what's going to happen with Kamiko here and what's going to happen to the boys and that Mother's Milk even says to Butcher getting a payoff from the earlier scene, like, this isn't going to work. You know, this isn't going to hold. I can't hold this all together and you knew this was going to happen kind of thing. And it's important that Butcher is realizing, like, this isn't the regular soldier boy either from the past. Like, something's different about him. Again, I'm just assuming the PCL Red's kind of going through his veins and that maybe the Russians are planning to, like, use it, making him now you know, a superpower weapon. So let's now switch over to everything going on with Homelander and Stan. And you see with Stan, he wants Victoria to kind of spook Homelander at a press conference now and put him in his place. But what he's doing is he's risking Victoria's life doing this. And she knows it, even though he's very confident that Homelander's scared of him. But the problem with this too, with Victoria is, Victoria, this episode is really hurt by Stan because she's, this is, you know, her father figure, but then she finds out from Homelander that she's basically just a weapon for him. But it's also, she feels betrayed in that sense, but also putting herself on the line and her daughter over himself. So that really hurt her as well. And this is what will ultimately lead to the decision of her putting the compound V into her daughter and not just a V24 permanent, making her daughter a soup. And that's what she's crying. It's a really good scene. But it also showing, again, what relates to everyone's decisions to show, basically, at some point is their fear of Homelander. But it's smart by Homelander because Homelander is recruiting in this same sense the other most powerful soup, I would argue, which is Newman, that she can blow people's heads off. So it's scary that she might be on Homelander's side. And there's kind of like this Magneto X-Men kind of vibe with Homelander recruiting her. Like, you know, I'm happy you chose our people, our type, instead of the others. Now, Starlight will go to Maeve. She's kind of trying to recruit Maeve into the plan but she didn't realize Maeve's been the mastermind behind it all so that's why Maeve's been training she's planning to fight Homelander to give Butcher enough time to get this weapon onto him and it's like they're kind of building a team in this episode to face Homelander and again really like this story in season three I think it's so interesting especially with the stakes being so high that you're having all these characters now go after Homelander and Homelander is at his like worst of the worst and that's what makes this season to me really just working on so so many ways. Now, my only nitpick of this episode is the scene with Starlight recruiting Supersonic. You know, he fakes her out because he says he's going to do this because he loves her. But instead, he's like, I'm going to help you because it's the right thing to do. I don't know if I'm that's earned, right? I don't know if what we've learned about Alex this season so far that he would just do this because it's the right thing to do. I think that's a little bit of an easy thing for the writers to put to kind of justify his quick turn there to 
want to actually risk going after Homelander when he was just excited recently to be even joining the Seven. So I think that might have been a little rushed. And they kind of forced that in there to kind of get his usage of being the death here to scare off Starlight. But maybe it's also a little disappointing that he his character was really, at the end of the day, really there just to make Huey go a little crazy, but also to be used as a plot point to scare Starlight by what Homelander does to him. But which we'll get into that in a minute. But I also want to go to the A-Train stuff. So A-Train, you know, wants to deal with Blue Hawk. But again, we know A-Train. He's doing this for his image. He's not actually doing this as a good person. And you see that Ashley also only cares about the commercial she needs A-Train to shoot, not about this Blue Hawk stuff. And I thought that was really funny that it's a play on the just cringeworthy Pepsi commercial with Kendall Jenner where she gives a cop a Pepsi. And then A-Train will bring up at the team meeting about Blue Hawk to Homelander. And I love that the Deep's girlfriend, she's like this secret scene stealer when she's in it because she's just texting him what to say and mouthing the words at the same time as he's saying it. And she's actually the one keeping the Deep on Homelander's good side and keeping him in the seven because he's a guy who usually says the wrong things. But when he has someone guiding him, he knows how to sell it. So I thought she's just hysterical here. And this will lead to A-Train and the Deep having a fight in the hallway. And what's interesting is they blackmail each other with stuff they've done actually to hurt Homelander in the past. Now, maybe I'm forgetting something, forgive me, but I'm maybe if someone could just point out, unless this is just like kind of a plot trick here, but did they both know about the blackmail they're talking about, what they did to Homelander? Like how would Deep know what A-Train was doing behind the scenes and vice versa? That was a little confusing to me, but I'm maybe I missed something. Maybe they did both know about things they were doing behind the scenes to Homelander, but that seemed odd. Now, Supersonic sees the frustration A-Train's having with Homelander at this point, and that's where he pitches in the elevator what Starlight was talking about. Unfortunately, Homelander says that as A-Train's the one who spilled the beans about the plan, maybe, and maybe it was wrong for him to try to trust an A-Train, or like he was saying that, you know, maybe they'll hear us, so maybe Homelander just heard A-Train going down that elevator. Now, Newman in her press conference, doesn't do what Stan wanted. She spins it on to Stan himself. No. Gets him in trouble, and she was clearly spooked by Homelander before this, and then we get to see the scene after, you know, where Homelander comes to her apartment, and again, she's looking after her daughter's safety, and this leads to Homelander is now Vought, like, full control. But there's a really good scene here with Stan and Homelander because... Homelander just wanted respect for him, like he says to Stan, but Stan's like, there's a gaping pit of insecurity you call Saul that he'd just be feeding. I love this, and he makes a great point that even though I'm leaving, the problem for you is that there's no one left to cover you now. Now that's really big setup, because that could be really bad for Homelander if this tape gets out that Maeve has. If anyway something comes out about stuff Homelander's done, there isn't that safety net anymore. And I love the line he says to him, you're not a god, you're just bad product. Ouch. I still wanted to see, though, I know they were trying to keep a surprise for the press conference, but maybe, like, it was a little odd how they put the scene timing with Newman and Homelander that we didn't see the scene before with Newman and Homelander that she'd want the compound V from him. So, I don't know, I think they were kind of covering that to keep the surprise, but I still maybe would have preferred to see that and her intentions totally there. Now we get this crazy scene at the end where Homelander brings Starlight up to the rooftop and it's revealed he has killed Supersonic brutally. And he mentions if she keeps up this plot to kill him, Huey's next. So really, really crazy cliffhanger there. And we got so much going on this episode. This is one of my favorite episodes of The Boys to date. And you know what? I think this season has been 10 times better than season two so far. Where you look at some of the episodes, especially mid-season, season season two, you're kind of, you know, dragging a bit and a little bit repetitive. This is just, the stakes are just so high that you feel like you're getting all this reward from storylines, even from season one, and characters we really care about. And like I've always said about the show, the more Homelander, the more Butcher, the better. And we're getting a lot of them. They're kind of the core of this season. And I'm just really, really excited to see where this goes next. So I'm giving this one a 9.6. So many good action sequences, in particular in the military base, but one of the best of the show, and I'll remember it for sure, is that one with the seven dildos. So really good stuff. And I want to know your guys' theories about what's going to happen next, what you thought of this episode. Please let me know. And please, if you can give me a tip, I'd be so appreciative. It helps me in so many ways or become a member today. It helped me even more to do this full time one day and give you guys more videos. And please follow me at Steve Varley Show on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for more of me. And please subscribe. It helps in so many ways as well. Just doing that, you have no idea. I'll be doing every episode of The Boys. You're not going to want to miss one. 
and I'll see you next time.